Hi ladies, hi gents. Um, right, so I showed you this canvas the other day and I promised you a tutorial. So I'm going to do one. So today's my birthday and I've got the day off work and I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to be doing sharing my birthday with you so you get to see what I do so everyone else is at work so I thought perfect I can sit and craft all day don't have to I've got my dressing gown on I don't have to get dressed it's just me Alfie and Simba that's the cat and the dog or the dog and the cat Alfie's the dog Simba's the cat um, and I'm gonna spend my day crafting and, and doing this uh, tutorial with you I don't know if I'll get it up loaded today it depends how long it takes me and how long the videos are but anyway so I've got my canvas board and I have just quickly gessoed it and let it dry uh, while I was getting everything else ready so that it's primed ready for me to go like I say you don't need to do that I just like to give it a coat of gesso before I work on it that's just what I do and so the rice paper image I'm going to use is this one, which is the dragonfly, which is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And this is from Stamperia. And again, just in case any of you don't know, I bought this from dallyartmarket.co.uk. And I'll just show you the web address. That's where I bought this and um, I do know they've got some new ones in stock. I, I did um, look last night because Dally, hi Dally, um, was doing some shows on TV and I, I watched a few, they were amazing. Um, so she does do uh, Ho-Chanda as well. So, And you know, even if you missed yesterday's shows, you can go on and um, preview them afterwards. Um, so, that's the store I bought it from. It's Stamperia and this is from the Wonderland uh, collection. The same as the Unicorn. Absolutely stunning, beautiful. Absolutely love working with these rice papers. They are so beautiful. Okay. Oh, right. If I just do it this way a sec. What you'll see is the rice paper is A4 in size. Um, my canvas is a little bit bigger. So I have roughly an inch, inch and a half here down the side where I um, add colour and a bit of detail. Because the flowers are on this side, this is where I want to do my embellishing. <coughs> so what I do is I look at the colours in it. So I'm looking at this sort of tealy blue. I'm looking at the pink. And I might do a lighter blue as well because there's a lot of lighter blue in this as well so I'm kind of looking at sort of three three colors to blend into the canvas so I have got this turned sideways so that you can see what I do because I thought if I do it this way I'm working over here you're going to get the shadow because it's raining outside and so I thought if I turn it this way you can see it as I do it a bit easier well that's the plan anyway okay So I've got these little uh, shop plastic glasses that I pick up in the pound shop. You get about 30 or 40 for a pound. And I use these for mixing my paint. So I've got some here already with uh, gesso in. Three little ones with gesso. I just put a couple of scoops of gesso in each one. And I use these lollipop sticks for mixers. Uh, again, from the pound shop, you get, oh, I don't know, 50 or 100 in a pack. I just pick them up when I see them because I use them for mixing the paints. Um, so I'm thinking a darker pink. I've got everything out that I think I might need. Okay, that one's a bit 
light. Okay, so I'm going to start with the darker teal. So this one is my glasses on so I can actually read the um, label. This is actually patina effect paste and it's from Prima. Now I don't know where this was bought because my husband bought me this for Christmas. Well I actually bought all these pa the, the paints that I'm using today, he bought all of them. So it's like a patina paste but the colour's great and perfect but I like to lighten my colours that's why I mix them up with gesso so I just take some of the paste and then mix it up in the gesso This in itself is quite therapeutic. <laughs> that's quite that's quite like the lighter blue. So I'm gonna leave that like that for the lighter bluish. And then I'm gonna do one a little bit darker, so I'm gonna add a bit more to this one to get the darker teal. And I don't edit videos, so, you know, this will be a long video, so please, please, I will not be offended if you choose not to watch it all. So, you know, it. this is how I do tutorials. If I'm going to do one, it has to be as it happens, because um, I really wouldn't have the time to sit and edit the videos that I do. That's a nice darker teal. So you can see the two colours. I'm hoping you can see the difference. One's quite a bit lighter and one's a bit darker. I'm not sure if the and we will show how different they are but here in front of me they're very different and then the pink I'm going to use I'll just show you what that that was the patina effect paste and came in a set of three I think this one and it's the blue this one is acrylic paint metallic vintage rose And this is to, to pull out the pinks. I'm hoping that's dark enough, this pink. Maybe a little bit more. And, you know, by mixing your own, your, your actual paints go a lot further, but I just like the shabbier colours, you know. But you all know I do. <laughs> the pink it's quite light I might just add I've got this little uh, pink paint here so I might just add a little bit of this as well I'm trying to see the name of it it doesn't actually say that I can see but I'll just show you it anyway it's just an acrylic paint and it's a sort of dusty pink so I'm just going to add a little bit of that in there as well okay, you can just see it's quite a bit darker and just mix that you know that it just 
look at the colours and see if you like them. If you like them, go with it. You know, the, the gesso just gives it that softer, shabbier look. And I'm quite happy with that now. <laughs> I'm just going to set that to the side. Take all the sticks out. Uh, if I show you the sticks, you'll get a better idea of the colours. So you can see the difference there between the blues. Okay. So I know that I want to roughly blend in a couple of um, colours onto here and I'm, I, I just go for it, I mean, when people were asking me what, how do you do it, I just, I just go for it, there's no um, sort of method I use. So, I do use a dry brush, I don't use a wet brush. To put a bit of uh, paper there so I can dab my brush on it. So I'm going to start with the darker colour and then I just dab a bit off and then I just go for it. I just start, I hope you can see, I just start brushing it on because I want that. I don't do the whole thing, I just do, and by doing it with the dry brush I get that softer, look, and I'm just blending it out where I want some of the colour, because I don't want a solid. And you can soften this, don't be scared to just go for it. <laughs> I'm happy with that. And then I do do a little bit round the other edges just to So that's the darker teal, so I'm quite happy with that for now. I might come back and add to it, but for now I'm happy with that. I'm just looking for the right size brush that will fit in my pot. So then I'm going to go with the pink. It's my phone, sorry. And then I just blend that in where I want the pink and you see they start to soften together this is a yummy pink, I like this pink
て。the light blue before I Messy craft, I do get it everywhere. rub a bit down the edges up there. I think I'm quite, I could do with a little bit of pink down here. I just, um, eyeball it, I really, do just play around. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that and the colours. Now to soften it up, a bit. What I do is I take a brush just with the white plain gesso. Just dab a bit off and then I just gently brush a bit over it just to blend it in a bit more. It kind of looks like clouds. <laughs> and that just helps blend it a bit and soften it a bit at the same time. Right. So, I just want to blend, I'm looking at it in the camera, so I just want to it will blend more as I use um, sprays on it later, but I just want to soften that bit there. there. I, I'm happy with that. So that that's how I um, just do the paint at the side. I just hold this over it a minute blend it in. 
So I'm gonna, this will dry really quickly, so um, I'm just gonna move that to the side for a moment. Hmm, that bit I didn't think about, hang on. There we go, let that dry a bit. <coughs> My paintbrush is over a bit. Right, so I have pulled out some sprays that I think I want to use. I think I want to use this one. I do like these leaves. Like this. This, I don't keep everything in packaging. This one I know I picked up at a craft fair. Uh, this one, Shilpa. Hi Shilpa. Um, sent me this one. I don't think I want to use all of it, but I think I want to use a bit of it, so I might cut that down. And I think I want to use what, uh, maybe one of these as well. And do you know what? I think Shilpa sent me these as well. These ones. So I'm just going to show you how I do these. So I think I want to use this bit. And you can just chop into these and select the bits you want to use. So this one's got a, uh, an acrylic flower and leaves and beads on it. This one's all paper and um, these squirrely wires. And this one is like a flower. I don't particularly like this green. So, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give these a really rough coat of gesso and all I do is literally, I know you, actually what you're going to ask me what gesso I use, I use so let me just show you that, Galleria white gesso and I'll just buy it in this big pot. There are tutorials on Facebook where people make their own gesso, make their own modelling paste so you know, but I buy the big pot and it lasts me forever. It, it lasts for ages and I use it a lot. So I'm just roughly um, just sewing all the leaves. And then this is pretty as is, but again, I do gesso it, so it's just what I do. You don't have to do the same, but this is just what I do. I love um, the softness that the colour, uh, the gesso gives to it. And, you know, then that way it doesn't matter if, all, if the colours don't totally blend that you're using. The gesso will help you blend the colours. Because this one's acrylic, it might need a couple of coats, but um, we'll see how that dries. It probably will need. I'm just going to do the back of that flower and then the front. I might do the back of these um, acrylic beads as well to tone the colour right down. So that's how it looks for now. And then this one, I might need a smaller brush for this one because it's more about the... And sometimes I do these and then I don't use them. <laughs> so, I just hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just giving them...
Gesso does dry quite quickly, but on this one, I do just want to do the backs of these um, because they might overhang the canvas. I don't know yet, so um, I do give them one coat on the back because some of it might overhang the edge of the canvas. So. messy process but it's quite therapeutic. I'm happy with that. And do this one on the back as well. So, let's touch this one up. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Set these to the side to dry. And the reason I use the newspaper like this is because I need to go like this and get rid of that. Put it to the side in case I need it later. To okay, so I'm going to bring the canvas back. Hopefully, it's all nice and dry. Yep. Okay, so down this edge, I also want to do a little bit of stenciling. So the one problem I've got with these stencils is I don't know the name of them because I really don't have enough space to um, keep all my stuff in um, the packaging. So... I just pulled out a couple that I think I want to use, which I think is these two. But before I do that, I'm going to add uh, the rice paper. So to put my rice paper down, I use Mod Podge matte because I like the matte finish. And I can get a brush. I've got a brush here. Soften it up. Okay, so I'm going to take this out. And it is just a case of decoupaging that down onto the canvas. So, um, what I do is let me get a piece of tissue ready. Okay, so I actually put the Mod Podge onto. Oh, 
dried glue on the top. I actually put the Mod Podge onto the canvas. Like so. Nice thick coat so it doesn't dry too quickly. Because it's a matte one, I'm not too worried about it if it goes over some of the paint that's going to be on show. That really doesn't matter because it's a matte finish. And you can see where you've put it, so you can see if you missed any. So I want to turn it so I can see it because I want to make sure that I get the edges so I need to stand up for this. Sorry if there's a shadow. And you've got a little bit of time to work with it. Don't worry if you've got, like me, look, a little bit of edge showing. That's fine because I do blend the edges in. So it will not be an issue. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it goes on so nice. It is a much thicker... Um, Check my edges are all down. Perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. These images are so beautiful. I just want that to, it will dry quite quickly. But I'm just going to use the heat gun really quickly just to dry it a little bit. Sorry for the noise but please bear with me while I just give it a little bit of a glass. I don't want it too wet when I do the edges. board and you'll see I've got this little edge here but that's fine I'm I'm fine with that because what I then do is I go back to my colours then and I start to 
just add little bits here and there. Blend it in like that. So I am going onto the paper a little bit, but not a huge amount. And as well here, even with the edge I done. Just blending a little bit of the colour in. Okay, that's the darker one done. I'll do the pink. Okay, a little bit of the, the lighter blue here and there. And you see it all starts to blend in. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. A bit here, that one. And again, you can use the, the white if, if you, it's just looks a bit strong there, and just add a little bit of white there, and blend it. Good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. <coughs> now, 
that way I don't waste these paints. I normally put a little bit of um, cling film over them. Um, so for this part, before I take a break, I am just going to do the modelling paste. And again, I use the Galleria. Now, I want to be very careful where I put these because the, the dragonfly is very close to the flowers. So I really want to try and position it in a way that I don't lose any of the dragonfly. So I think there. I might have to turn this for me to be able to do this bit. So you can see I've gone onto the image, but I'm also on the painted bit. Um, I'm not very good at the model and paste thing, I just go for it um, because I'm quite messy at it so um, I just stick some on my little plastic thing, put my finger on it and just hope for the best. <laughs> I literally do hope for the best, hope it turns out alright. Yeah, like I say, I'm not great at it. I don't. I do have some metal ones of these, but I couldn't find them this morning. They're not where they normally are which means either someone's borrowed them, because obviously many King Kane are quite um, arty and they sometimes come and borrow some stuff. Oh, I've moved them. Okay. Fingers crossed, everyone. <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> on the newspaper there. It's messed up. Mm, it's not too bad. Okay. And I do want to do another one down here. don't want to cover these flowers there. So, go that way. No, that way. I'm thinking there. So I'm just going to go for it. If I think about it too long, I change my mind and that's when I... Um, don't trust my instincts so I just go for it. <laughs> I need a new pot of this, I haven't got much left in there. And the Galleria stuff I buy from uh, Hobbycraft in the UK, um, for any of the UK ladies, that's where I get it. I'm sure you can find it on eBay and stuff. Right. Best. I know I got a little bit on the perfect. No, it's not perfect, but you know what I mean. I'm happy with that, right? I've just got a little bit on the canvas there. Oh. And that's my phone. So I'm going to take a break there and answer the phone, and I will be back once that's dry. So thank you for watching. <laughs>